60 minutes. We are the dominant team this week, and they never had a shot! Team in the history of college football to win five consecutive championships. James Madison did what you thought was possible. They knocked off the five-time defending FCS champions. The Dukes of James Madison are kings of the FCS. North Dakota State heading to Frisco, Texas as they dominate. 26 wins in a row. James Madison at North Dakota State in the FCS National Championship game. You're watching the NCAA FCS Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual. We are just outside of Dallas in Frisco, Texas at Toyota Stadium, and it's come down to this, the two best teams in the FBS, JMU, North Dakota State, the Dukes, and the Bison. Somebody's going home with a championship. And a pleasant good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dave Neal. This is former Georgia All-American and NFLer Matt Stinchcomb, Quint Kesnick on the sidelines. He'll join us here in a matter of moments. And, well, everybody was kind of wondering, could this happen? The number one and number two seeds playing for the national championship here in Frisco, and we got it. Two dominating teams. Stint, you couldn't get any better than this. It doesn't. I mean, when you look at the FCS level, you've got the last six national championship winning programs represented in this ball game right now. North Dakota State dominating for five straight seasons, but unseeded last year by James Madison. And you can see as the numbers bear out just how dominant these two programs have been, not only on the offensive side of the football, defensively, they have really been strong both seasons. And you look at James Madison, they're trying to become what North Dakota State is. And North Dakota State is trying to bring balance back to the universe, at least their universe anyway, <laughs> with this FCS National Championship game today. Now, when you start talking about the Dukes, obviously this two-year run under their coach, Mike Houston, who is in his second season, has been unparalleled. It has just been amazing. How have they been able to build this program the way that they have under him in such a short period of time? You know, it was a good observation by Coach Houston yesterday. He said, look, we kind of ambushed the field last year. Nobody really felt as if we could achieve what we ultimately did. This year, we got everyone's best shot, and I think it's born of this senior class. It's the most accomplished senior class in James Madison history. And when you think about that, if you can lean on those types of players and then have others emerge and keep spots, like at tailback with a Marcus Marshall, then you're able to overcome adversity and ultimately contend for a title again. I mean, you talk about powerhouses, North Dakota State. It started with Craig Ball. It's continued on with Chris Kleiman. What is their way of doing things. How have they been able to dominate their level of football like nobody else has? Well, they have two things. They have identity and they have expectations, and they've created both. The identity is to play as physical football as you're going to find at the FCS level. Part of that is that run-oriented offense and an incredibly stingy defense, and you look at what Coach Kleiman has done. He has built into that culture that's resulted in repeated championships. Standing room only. Even that's sold out. There have been a lot of Bison fans, a lot of Duke fans that have converged in Frisco, all for this, a national championship. It's the FCS National Championship, James Madison, North Dakota State, moments away from kickoff. Down on the field is Quint Kesnick today. Let's get an update from him. Hey, Quint. James Madison's secondary this season has been beyond excellent. They've been incredible, generating 31 interceptions and 43 turnovers. They're opportunistic, whether in man or zone coverage, ball hawks and game changers. You're going to really like watching Jimmy Moreland, Jordan Brown, and Raven Green. Meanwhile, for North Dakota State, injuries in their secondary in the semifinals. They lost two corners, Jalen Allison and Jalen Wimbush. Allison warmed up. Quite honestly, he didn't look good. It's unlikely that he'll play knee injury. Wimbush will play with a brace on. But Dave, there'll be some experience, inexperienced corners for the Bison. Thanks, Quinn. And you can bet that the Dukes will try to take advantage of that early and often to see if North Dakota State can't hold up on the edge. JMU wins the toss. They want the football. And we are underway. So the Dukes will bring it out to the 25-yard line, led by their senior quarterback, Brian Shore. 
29 and 3 as a starter. 7 and 0 in FCS playoffs. What do you like about him? Well, you know, he's a guy that's such a grinder. And they talked about that's been the difference in his career ever since he took over the reins at quarterback is the time that he has put in away from the coaches and the rest of the teammates, not only in the film room, but also with his wide receivers, a guy that's built excellent rapport with his perimeter players, especially in the passing game. Not a bad runner as well as Shore. Keep an eye on him with the ball in his hands in the rushing attack. They will throw to the edge near side, and that one goes to Marshall, who slips down. They'll say a loss of five on the play. He's better off just kind of letting that one hit the turf. They're going to say back at the 20 yard line, it'll be second down and 15 now. You see his ball coming out. Yeah, definitely hit the turf. Incomplete pass. I'm surprised well, that they're ruling that a catch. Somebody should buzz that down, and uh, that cost JMU five yards. And they'll run it with Marshall off the left side, and he'll get a yard and a half. So now third down and long for the Dukes. And this will be the challenge in this game. Will the Dukes be able to establish this rushing attack versus an incredibly physical defensive front? Look at Nate Tangway, who was in on that tackle, number 99. A distinct concern for Donnie Kirkpatrick, the offensive coordinator, because they have two young guards, a couple of freshmen for the James Madison Dukes. Sure. He's going to try to scramble for it and dropped back at the 25 yard line. Caleb Butler comes up to make the play, the junior defensive end, a former walk on who has made his presence felt here in 2017. Doesn't start any better for the Bison in this game. You bring pressure off the edge with Jabril Cox. You get a lucky break on what was ruled a complete pass. Ended up being a, a tackle for loss. They said it was a catch. But a great job by the defensive front already in this game, asserting its presence. You know, the only thing I can think of is they thought that was a, a, a backwards pass, a lateral, and thus a fumble, but it, it was a forward pass. And it cost JMU five on their opening play and forced to punt it. Ooh, and North Dakota State getting a little frisky with the football. Darius Shepard back there, 42-yard punt. And now a chance for us to see this North Dakota, State, North Dakota State offense, second in the country, 40 points a game, led by Easton Stick, their outstanding quarterback. On well, Easton Stick, you know, he was kind of apprenticed under Carson Wentz, a legend at the FCS level, and has certainly played well at the professional ranks. And Stick is a guy, they've had some explosive passing games. But a lot of that is born of the running attack. They're going to try to establish that rushing game early on with multiple tight end sets, just like the one they're opening this possession with. And a flag before they can get the playoff. False start against the Bison. Number 62, offense, five-yard penalty. Still first down. Mike Vanderbilt, our referee out of the Southland Conference. A lot of noise inside Toyota Stadium. First and 15. Let's take a look at how today's team plan for success brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Well, with North Dakota State on offense, they want to weaponize the tight end position by that. I mean to give multiple formations for the James Madison defense to try to match the plays exactly into what this defense has to do. They have to have the right numbers at the point of attack. What North Dakota State likes to do is formation you to see if they can get a numbers advantage where they want to run the football. You see a lot of pre-snap shifts. Second down and 12. Stick will throw. That pass is caught on the far side by Shepard. He picks up four, so now it'll be third down, and let's call it about eight. And both coaches telling us that with these defenses, you cannot be facing third and long. Well, they mirrored one another in that desire. Both these offenses want to stay on schedule. Both offenses have opened this game behind schedule. You get the incomplete pass for James Madison. You get the false start for North Dakota State, and you place your offense in an uncomfortable position with the third and long.
Four-man rush. Forces Stick to try to run for it, and he can't. Gets a yard, maybe. Andrew Anker, one of the best in the business, the All-American, the first-team All-American, making the play. You know, James Madison wants to be able to get to your passer with just four. Seven in coverage, just too long with the football stick. Wasn't comfortable delivering it. And Bob Trott, the defensive coordinator for the Dukes, said, look, every sack is born off of coverage. Every pick is born off of pressure. They play complementary defense from the defensive front all the way to the secondary. Koontz. There will be a flag down as Koontz is hit. James Madison went after the punt, and in the process, Jackson Koontz got hit by Jimmy Moreland. Head coach Chris Kleiman anticipated this. He expected James Madison to come after a punt. Makes sense here. You're in negative territory. It's early in this game. Both offenses kind of stubbing their toes. But he did not anticipate a Personal penalty. Personal foul, roughing the kicker. Number 11 of the receiving team. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down, North Dakota State. A low snap. You can see breaking through the wall there. Bryce McKinley. It looked like Jimmy Moreland as well. And North Dakota break. State's going to get the football across the 50 at the 47 yard line, first down and 10. Interesting now, North Dakota State blowing out the formation with four wide receivers. Little slip screen to Shepard. He'll get it to the 45, a gain of two. Mike Houston in his second season at James Madison, 28 and one. Just signed a 10 year contract back on December 12th. Came from Citadel where he was, did a nice job getting the Bulldogs back on the map. Took them to the FCS playoffs. Was there in 14 and 15. Former tight end at Mars Hill University. Seth Wilson driving down inside the 40. Young man, they took the red shirt off of him about a week eight because of injuries in the backfield. And boy, he had an outstanding game in the semifinals. Coming off the bench, rushed for 194 yards in that game. And Seth Wilson's a local guy, one of those guys that they needed to step up when Ty Brooks got banged up. Hadn't had a ton of production prior to the game versus Sam Houston State. 18 carries, only 92 yards on the season prior to that explosive performance. A third and short now, far more manageable for the Bison. Dimitri Williams goes in motion. They'll come this way with Stick who hurdles a defender and will have the first down. They will spot it at the 31-yard line, a gain of nine. We said we could anticipate some more quarterback run in this game. There's nothing to wait on now. The Bison played about half their season without a healthy backup quarterback, so they had to be judicious with how often they ran Easton Stick. But make no mistake, he is a weapon as a runner, one of the better runners on the entire Bison team, especially when he's able to read the defense. And so far in this game, all zone run concepts from North Dakota State. And Lance Dunn back in the game and running back. They'll fake it to him and throw near side. That pass is caught. R.J. Erzendowski, 36 catches on the year. That's a gain of 15. Move the chains for the Bison. Nice throw right here. Excellent location of that football and under duress because Stick got stuck right as he got rid of this football by Kyrie Hawkins. He's the heart and soul of the Dukes defense. A very physical player got there just a second short before Stick was able to deliver that strike. Stick to throw. A little hole in the middle of that defense down to the six yard line. Goes Darius Shepard. That's a pickup of nine. Raven Green, the safety, bringing him down. A couple of times we've now seen Darius Shepard targeted on this opening possession. He's a guy 
that they wanted to step up. Courtney Messingham, the offensive coordinator for North Dakota State, he anticipated having to throw the football more, as we've seen in this kind of second life of this opening possession. After the penalty, North Dakota State opening it up a bit more, throwing the football. We see the formations blown out with more wide receivers. Bruce Anderson in the game at running back. Stick keeps it himself and his wall right at the line of scrimmage. He was just able to get the yardage needed. He was being chased down by Andrew Ankra from behind. Did a great job of closing on the back side. The Bison get two pullers out in front. Did a great job. Austin Cooner, one of their better offensive linemen, leading the way. Ankra able to get there to stick, but not before he was able to convert for a first and goal. So it's first and goal from just a tick outside the five. This is the QB run game. We can expect Q Stick to keep the ball more here. I'll go inside handoff and a couple of yards. Anderson, who has 11 rushing touchdowns on the year. The team's leading rusher, 1,153 yards coming into this one. He exploded in the semis against Sam Houston State. 183 yards on just 17 carries. A career high for Anderson, and he's a guy that's had to step up. As you mentioned, Lance Dunn went down on the seventh game of the season versus Western Illinois. It's been Bruce's show proved that he could be an explosive runner. Oh, line up in the eye with a couple of tight ends. Power football from the Bison. Anderson trying to power his way to the goal line, and they're going to say touchdown, North Dakota State. Well, they motion the streak to the right side of the formation. And you see Anderson, he, he literally just rides the wave of defenders. I don't know that his elbow wouldn't have established him down before that ball breaks the plane. It was just an A-gap power, a blast play. Previous play of a touchdown is under further review. Take another look at it for sure. And you could see there for a moment, he was on top of bodies. Looked like... James Madison defenders were underneath Anderson wouldn't have established anything in his lower body down but I think his elbow may have touched before the ball broke the plane. We have Rogers Redding with us up here in the booth. National director of officiating for the NCAA and uh, Rogers what are we looking at on this. Well what we need to see is where the ball is when he hits when he touches down and it, it it's going to be difficult I think to overturn this unless they get a look where. As, as Matt suggested, where his elbow may be on the ground. It's really hard to see. you got all these bodies in there. But uh, this I'm not sure they're going to have enough to overturn this because he is so much on, on other bodies as he goes across there. So uh, my guess is that it's probably going to stand. They might, they might determine that his elbow went down before the ball. But the question is, where was his elbow when the ball went over? It, Rogers, that's just what they got to do. It looked like the ball was in his right arm as he was approaching the goal line. And yeah. then he tries to switch it to his left arm, but by then it looked like that left elbow had already made contact. The question is, Matt, whether or not there's indisputable evidence to make that determination. And they may not have enough to turn this over. They're, they're obviously going to take a long look at it because on a scoring play, obviously you want to make sure. And so they're just taking their time to make sure. Remember this, this whole drive was kept alive by a roughing the punter. Call it. After further review, the ruling on the fan stands as called. Touchdown. That's about all they can do because they didn't have evidence to go either confirm or to overturn. So Anderson picks up his 12th rushing touchdown of the year in North Dakota State. Awaiting the extra point to try to make this a 7 to nothing contest here in the opening quarter. James Madison has only given up 10 points in the first quarter all season long. And the point after is executed perfectly from Cam Peterson. Well, it started with a penalty. North Dakota State got a break when the Dukes went after it. That gave him a first down, and then they turned it over to their quarterback, Easton Stick. A couple of nice runs, and then Anderson takes it in from the three. Top two teams 
in the FCS, squaring off for the national championship here in Frisco, Texas. And North Dakota State gets on the board first against a defense that is allowing opponents just 10 points a game. But on the flip side, North Dakota State has just dominated teams in the opening frame, 147 to 43 this year. They also dominate in the third quarter as well. Yeah, they start fast. You know, they start out fast in the first half, and they come out of the locker room in the second half as well. And versus a team that can run the football with authority, if you give them a lead, if you see some of that scoreboard, it can be a distinct challenge, but keep in mind, James Madison, very explosive offensively. That's been the biggest concern for North Dakota State coming into this game was to limit the explosive playmaking ability of the Dukes. Line drive kick. That'll be scooped up by Etheridge. Coming near side. He's out to around the 40-yard line. Last year in the semifinals, the run ended for North Dakota State. December 16th, James Madison goes to the, the Fargo Dome, led by Khalid Abdullah's 180 yards rushing and a touchdown catch. The Dukes jumped out to a 17 to nothing lead, but the Bison would fight back. They would tie the game with a King Fraser touchdown run. But at the end of the day, it was 10 points in the fourth quarter by the Dukes, including a John Miller TD reception that gave James Madison the victory and a trip to the championship game. And if you talk to Chris Kleiman, the head coach of the Bison, they have not forgotten. And they made that loud and clear to us. You know, losing at home in the Fargo Dome is unheard of. And when James Madison walked in there, and got up 17 to nothing. I, I think there was just shock and awe in the building. Well, it's a place they've never been before, right? You're sitting there going, I can't believe this is actually occurring and where it's occurring. They rallied back, but credit James Madison a season ago for putting that game away in the second half. Trying to set up the screen. Incomplete. Let's go down to Quinn. Uh, this Bison defense is better this year, uh, especially up the middle. Keep in mind, Nick DeLuca, their middle linebacker, did not play in that game. Nate Tangway, their defensive tackle, big number 99, also did not play with injuries. Between Tangway, DeLuca, and free safety Trey Dempsey, this defense is so solid up the middle. Well, that's, that's proof in this possession once again. They've done an excellent job. DeLuca in on the previous tackle, forcing a third and long. Here comes some heat, sure. Coming near side, back shoulder throw, and it's dropped. They had Etheridge, and he couldn't hold on. Well, fans are fourth down. Seeking a defensive pass interference versus Robbie Grimsley. I'll tell you what, we're playing this game from North Dakota State's perspective. And they're shy, a player in their secondary, Jalen Allison, wasn't able to go. One of their best cover men. And that has not slowed down Matt Entz one bit. He brings pressure, singled up coverage along the boundary. Great job by Grimsley of breaking up that back shoulder, something that the Dukes do very, very well in those fades. Harry O'Kelly. Rugby style punter from Australia. That'll be stopped around the 14 yard line, a 43 yard punt. Bison by a touchdown back in a moment. North Dakota State trying to cap off a 13-1 season to this point. Only loss came to South Dakota State when they turned it over five times in that game. They won their seventh straight Missouri Valley Championship. It is their sixth FCS championship appearance in the last seven years. They've been to the semifinals seven consecutive years. No one's ever done that before. They've outscored their opponents 135 to 26 in these playoffs. They've rushed for over 1,000 yards, in school, including a couple of weeks ago, a school record 471 yards on the ground against Sam Houston State. See the dominance that they've had throughout this year. 12 of those 13 wins by 12 points or more. It has not been close when the Bison get rolling. Here's Lance Dunn. He turns the corner. He gets it out to the 21-yard line, a gain of six. Well, for the Bison to get Lance Dunn back in this game is huge. We mentioned Seth Wilson having to step up, but Ty Brooks, he was the change-up runner in this rushing attack, kind of a home run hitter to Bruce Anderson. 
And now you've got Dunn to share the, lo share the load because this team wants to get, they want to get 40 plus carries on the ground. You've got to be able to spread those around. Second down and four. Stick. Trying to find somewhere to go and then is dropped back around the, they're going to spot his forward progress at the 14, a loss of six. Darius Carter making the play. And the protection was there. The Dukes bring slot pressure from the field and it's picked up. They're sliding right into it. It's excellent protection, just nowhere to go with the football and Sticks got to get rid of that football. You can't take a negative yardage play right there to put you in a third and 10. You got to unload that football or tuck it and run and pick up positive yards. Carter, the transfer from the University of Virginia. Stick lofts it up, coming near side through the hands of Darius Shepard. It's incomplete, and now the Bison will bring out their punt team. Rashad Robinson on the coverage for the Dukes. And the Dukes were bringing heat. They came with six. North Dakota State did an excellent job. They picked it up. The protection once again was there. The ball too far beyond the outstretched hands of Darius Shepard. And now an opportunity for the Dukes to take advantage of what could be excellent field position. Jackson Koontz back to punt. Amos comes up to field it. He's got room to the 30, to the 20, and he's dragging Koontz with him to the 15-yard line. A 38-yard return sets up James Madison in the red zone. You come after the first one, and it costs you a drive going the other direction. Your defense does a great job forcing the punt. You get a low-line driver. Great job by Amos getting it upfield quickly, working his way to that boundary. And the Dukes able to take possession of this football after that punt return inside the red zone. They have to capitalize here. Red zone possessions will be paramount versus these defenses. Trey Sharp at running back, but they'll fake it to him over the middle. It's incomplete. It'll bring up a second down and 10. They were trying to hit Terrence Alls, who has 53 catches on the year to lead the team. The Alls should make this catch, but not a great ball from Brian Shore right there. Behind his receiver, if he hits him in stride, Alls has got a chance to muscle his way into the end zone. Couple of drops now, one on an attempted screen pass for the Dukes. Over the middle again, and too much. Trying to hit Klosterman, and that is incomplete. And I tell you what, Shore now one of five to start this game. Now a little bit high with that ball. You know, North Dakota State was trying to rally it. They just popped Klusterman out after the heavy play action fake. And he was able to sneak behind the coverage. You know, they rarely go all the way out to the number one receiver, but that's where Riley Stapleton is at the top of your screen. Come across the middle, and that one's dropped. Here's Mayo Hyman through his hands. The fifth-year senior can't hang on. Jabril Cox was chasing him down, and here comes the field goal unit. Surprised they threw it three consecutive times. Yeah, you know, all, all, already in this game, it seems as if James Madison, they're not conceding the rush, but they haven't had any success in the times where they've attempted it. Moving the football around in the perimeter, but they're going to have to play better, not only in ball placement, but receivers doing an excellent job of making these catches. 31 yard attempt from Ethan Radke, the red shirt freshman. He will split the uprights. He is now 13 of 16 on the year. The Dukes get on the board. 348 to go in the opening quarter. They trail seven to three. The NCAA FCS football championship is presented by Northwestern Mutual. Spend your life living. Well, back in the middle of October, ESPN's game day crew visited Harrisonburg, Virginia. <laughs> and of course, Lee Corso 
he has been known to have so many very, I guess, entertaining yeah. picks. Well, this time it was not only entertaining, it was scaring the heck out of the Duke's dog, the, the Bulldog. Yeah, I Bulldog, mean, you know what it is, is that he's looking at, at the mascot head and he's going, that doesn't look like a Bulldog to me. <laughs> no. It's foreign, and I never get uh, to wear a crown either. Thank goodness Kirk was there to save the dog. You know, the, if you're wondering, the Dukes is derived from the school's second president, Samuel Page Duke, who served the university from 1919 to 1949. And in 1938, he renamed the school James Madison University. And Samuel Page Duke had a dog, and it was a bulldog, and thus the bulldog became kind of the mascot of the school. There you go. Nice. He had Woj up there as James Madison. Bruce Anderson out to the 25-yard line and stood up there. Hey, Monday night on ESPN, it's the college football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T between the Dogs and the Tide at Mercedes-Benz Stadium at Atlanta, 8 o'clock Eastern time. It's also streaming live on the ESPN app. You and I both live in Atlanta, and we do know that uh, it is a mess. President coming to town. Yeah, you talk about that. Our, our fair city struggles with traffic as it is. You can only imagine with those two fan bases descending on <laughs> Centennial Park. Let's hope they rally. First down and 10. Here goes Dunn using a stiff arm, and there's a flag coming in. Looks like there will be a hold. Cornell Urquhart got up looking right at the official saying, I hope you saw that. Let's see if they did. Holding number 64, offense, 10 yard penalty, still first down. And they end up getting Colin Connor, left tackle. You know, they keep adding a defender, though. That time, Jordan Brown, number 44 for James Madison. He's a safety. He'll play deep in the hole, but a lot of times he will be proximate to the line of scrimmage. That time at linebacker depth, he did a great job of bouncing outside with Lance Dunn on that A-gap power. That's something the Bison runners do very, very well. They will bounce backside from where the puller came from. Quick hit to the outside, spotted around the 18-yard line. But this Duke's defense has been as good as they come. Ten points allowed per game, led the FCS, 251 total yards allowed per game. When it comes to running the football, 87 yards a game for the opponents. They only allowed 163 through the air. And, you know, when you break down the numbers and you start talking to coaches about what makes this defense so good, Smothering, physical, athletic. <laughs> Those are all adjectives you want when you're talking, as long as it's your own defense you're talking about. Here's Stick. Boy, he gets walloped at the 23-yard line, shy of the original line of scrimmage. Let's go down to Quinn. Yeah, David, Matt, one thing from field level that stands out, the length of these DNs, whether it's Darius Carter or Ankra, they're FBS looking like DNs. I mean, they're long, rangy, and they do a great job setting the edge. And then, of course, you got the perimeter speed with their corners and safeties. But re really impressive looking DNs. Well, and it's third and 10 plus where that link really makes you nervous. You got a guy like Ankra he's coming off the edge right up here, working against the right tackle of the Bison, Zach Johnson. Pressure comes. Stick one hops it to Anderson. Rolling on the field is an incomplete ball. We're making it almost easy for the defense. It's the negative yardage plays or penalties. These offenses putting themselves in a hole. The holding penalty, getting the Bison off of their schedule. And that's exactly where this Duke defense wants to get to. They want to be able to tee off up front. That time brought pressure once again on third and 10 plus and able to get home and disrupt the passer. Amos to midfield. 37 yard punt and excellent field position for the Dukes. But how about this 
JMU season. 14 and 0 record. 26 consecutive wins now. Third straight CAA championship. First time in school history they have done that. Now they overcome an eight point deficit late in the fourth quarter to defeat Weber State in the quarterfinals. They won it on a field goal. They forced 10 turnovers in a drubbing of South Dakota State in the semifinals, 51 to 16. And of course, uh, allowing less than 11 points a game, but 10 turnovers in their semifinal game. Throw to the wide side of the field, pass is caught by Riley Stapleton. That's a pickup of eight. First time we've seen Riley Stapleton targeted in this game. And we want to talk about the range of the defensive ends. They got a receiver that looks like a DN, 6'5", 223 pounds. And when he's healthy, and he has been in the playoffs, he can be an incredibly explosive playmaker for James Madison. Two touchdowns last week set the tone. Second down and two. They'll go inside handoff. Trey Sharp will have the first down. Out around the 37-yard line. Give him five. Jared Tesca on the play for the Bison. And now you see the Dukes trying to go tempo. Coming into this possession, they only had two yards of total offense. Sharp again trying to hit it. One up the middle there, and he will take it to the 30. One yard line Stanley Jones and again tempo for the Dukes and you see the Bison making wholesale changes along their defensive front and as you see the umpire coming in there to allow the Bison to set when you substitute as an offense you have to allow the defense to sub as well. Marshall he stood up at the 30. Marcus Marshall, the transfer from Georgia Tech, had a couple of solid seasons over on the flats in Atlanta before finding his way to James Madison, where he certainly knows something about this program. His dad, Warren, played at JMU 83 to 86, the school's all time leading rusher. And of course, the brother of former Georgia running back, Keith Marshall. Over the middle, pass is caught by Stapleton. He'll have the first down at the 23 yard line again at seven. And now they start getting big number 10 going. The guys battled through a high ankle sprain this year, a broken finger. But in the playoffs, as we've mentioned, he has exploded onto the scene, a weapon that they anticipated. He and Shore have excellent chemistry with one another. Little shoulder fake, a pump fake, and then nowhere to go. Shore is dropped. Derek Tuska, the sophomore, drops him for a loss of eight, and that'll be the final play of the first quarter. Again, a negative yardage play. Right as your offense is starting to roll, the pump fake, and it just proved to be too slow developing, and a great job by Tuska continuing to work his pass rush. Well, that'll do it for the first 15 minutes of this national title game between James Madison and North Dakota State. The Bison got on the board first. James Madison answered with a field goal. 7-3 our tally. And welcome back to the NCAA FCS Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual. Start of the second quarter. Dave Neal, Matt Stinchcomb, Quint Kessnick down the sidelines. Top two teams in the FCS. It is second down and 17 and you look at those total yards for James Madison just 21. They will add to that here as they will give the football to Trey Sharp. But only to the 26 yard line. Well, Trey Sharp. A little banged up last week versus South Dakota State. He's got the most carries in a game this year. They like him a lot. Now they've got him split out wide to the bottom of your screen right on the numbers. So an empty set. Sure, two of eight. Again, the pocket collapses. Sure on the run back over the middle. And that one is picked off at the nine yard line. They're going to say he dropped it incomplete. Oh, it was right in his field, belly. Chris Board had the football. Well, I don't know how that one snuck out of there. Great pressure. 
I don't know how bored. I'll tell you what, it ends up being an excellent play breaking up that pass because the DB undercuts it and Chris Board and the reception is broken up and now a big play that time from Trey Sharp on the draw just to make this a more makeable attempt. 42 yarder on the way. Ratke hit from 46 to win it against Weber and misses this one. Man you take a sack. It backs you up. You've been able to pick up some positive yards on the draw. Lucky to even get a field goal attempt off without that interception. North Dakota State has certainly put together a dynasty. Five consecutive national championships starting in 2011. But then last year at home in the semifinals, James Madison took him down 27 to 17 to end that streak. They are now in their sixth championship game in the last seven years. 13 and one record on the season. Only lost to South Dakota State. Chris Kleiman, of course, was a coordinator under Craig Bowl. Got the head job and hasn't looked back. Well, North Dakota State, they were happy to open things up. Now they're boxing it right back in. They got 10 guys in this formation. Boy, nowhere to go for Anderson. Maybe a yard. You know, just thinking about this North Dakota State team and what they've done since 2011, 96 and 8 is their record. 96 and 8, just not just that for a minute. Is, is that good, Dave? Yeah. It's just dominance. It's the consistency more than anything else. And, you know, the Missouri Valley Conference is not without its challenges. In fact, North Dakota State has kind of elevated the level of play throughout that conference, making it all the more difficult to amass that type of a record. Anderson will kick it to the outside, and he is chased down at the 31-yard line. Nice play from Jimmy Moreland to make the tackle a gain of four. You're not kidding. Jimmy Moreland on the chase on the backside. This is something that North Dakota State anticipated. What JMU will do, though, a couple times, they'll like bring a chase corner, especially on some of these runs where it's going to the field or opposite. And that chase corner will beat the tackler. He'll ultimately make the play. If Mullen doesn't get there, you're still running, perhaps for a first down. Third down and five. Stick coming near side with it. Pass is caught by Erzendowski. And they're going to spot his progress just over the 35 yard line. He may be short by about a half a yard. It will be fourth down. And Chris Kleiman not going to mess around with this Duke's defense. He's going to punt it away. Well, they brought Erzendowski in motion. And he's just a yard shy with his route. They rally right up field. They're able to make a nice play. But ultimately not enough, even with the completion by Erzendowski. Amos deep. He's at the 20 yard line for James Madison. Jackson Kuntz will punt it away. High kick into the win, and it is going to drop the 38 and a favorable roll for the Dukes. 37 yard punts. Hey, the NFL playoffs start on ESPN and ABC today with the wild card game beginning at 420 Eastern Time. The Titans and the Chiefs from Arrowhead Stadium. You can also catch that one live on the ESPN app if you're on the go because this game is now available on mobile phones. Our coverage starts with postseason NFL countdown at 3 o'clock Eastern time. Our well, last offensive possession, they got Riley Stapleton going a little bit with a couple of receptions. Marshall, nowhere to go. Marcus has been... Stuck in the mud so far here in the first half. Finished with 820 yards on the season. Averaged 6.2 yards a carry and really got it going after about the third week of the season when he kind of understood how to 
run in this type of offense, different than what he ran in Georgia Tech. It was a B-back in a triple option offense. You take the handoff and you bang your head on whoever's in the A-gap. You don't deviate. That's different in this system. Shore will keep it out to the 35-yard line. Yeah, you need more patience in this system. Well, we were talking with Mike Houston. He said, you know, it's slow to and fast through. And when you're in a zone type of a run game, you have to let things develop. That's entirely different from what Marshall came from. Another third down opportunity. Neither team has had much success. Both one for five on third downs this afternoon. And you can see... The Dukes checking, looking to the sidelines. The Bison check as well. The front and linebackers changing the look. Some corner pressure. Sure. Back shoulder throw incomplete looking for Stapleton. There is no flag. Well, they've had Marquise Bridges locked up with Stapleton, especially on this possession. And as you mentioned, North Dakota State you know, sometimes if you check defenses, they'll default to just coverage. But instead, Robbie Grimsley comes on the pressure. The back shoulder throw could have been there. You see Stapleton, he's wanting the flag to come out. There was some contact there, but no flag. And Bridges able to defend that back shoulder. Harry O'Kelly with a line drive punt to Shepard. He is hit. At the 29-yard line, a 38-yard punt. We got ourselves a 7-3 ball game, 10-25 to go second quarter from Frisco, Texas. A packed house here at Toyota Stadium in Frisco, Texas for this national championship game. JMU tried to defend their championship. North Dakota State wants it back after winning five in a row before last year. But the offense really on both sides has really slowed down. These are two defensively minded teams and defense has certainly taken over. You know, three straight punts now for North Dakota State after that opening touchdown. Then important to note that that would have been even a three and out were it not for a penalty on the punt. First down and 10 for North Dakota State. They will fake it to Dunn, come near side with it, and that pass is, they're going to say, caught, and they're going to spot it around the 43-yard line. Dimitri Williams makes the catch, a gain of 14. And a contested catch at that. Dimitri Williams, great job making the reception, and Easton Stick fitting in there tightly versus really good coverage from Jimmy Moreland, who looked like he had a hand on it. Great job securing the catch by Williams. This is something else, it's kind of a staple of the Bison offense. They'll boot out, they'll run half rolls, cut the field in half, and get Lau Stick to throw on the run. Stick seven of nine for 50 yards, but a flag, a couple of them come in. Ball start, number 75, offense, five yard penalty, still first down. Now both guards in this game with false starts. Bryce Messner, first play of the game, a false start. That time Austin Kuhner. He came completely out of his stance. It looked to me like he was setting up the pass protect on first down. Four-year starter, some think might be the best guard in the FCS. Really the bell cow of that old line. So first down and 15. Student body right with Lance Dunn. Gain of three. The junior at a Waterloo, Iowa, started the first seven games, had nine touchdowns in the first three games. And it's his first game back after missing seven because of a hip injury. Torres Labrum against Western Illinois. Returned to practice, and he was one of those guys that coaches said, we'll just see how it goes, see how it plays out today. But anytime there's a championship on the line, I'm thinking guys will find a way on the field, right? That's exactly right. <laughs> Funny how that works. <laughs> and as we mentioned, because they're down a body, they're running back with Ty Brooks out in this game. Could have come at a better time. Stick. Drops. Lost the football. It's on the turf. James Madison will have it. Really Simeon Robinson came right up the middle of the senior the defensive First tackle. Down. And then Gus Little fell on the football. Bad couple of downs for Austin Cooner. 
First the false start. Here's Robinson. And he's just going to beat him right now. Right at the line of scrimmage. Just gets extension, a little pull and jerk, and gets the edge of Coonert. Robinson able to get a solid shot on Easton Stick and a tremendous opportunity for the Dukes offensively, once again taking possession with tremendous field position. Marshall to the 25, picks up three. Robbie Grimsley, the safety, coming up to put the hit on him. And It'll be second down, let's call it seven. You know, so much is quick changes in games. How do you handle momentum swings? North Dakota State off a long punt return from James Madison. They were able to bow their necks, force a field goal. That was when the Dukes took possession in the red zone. Can they defend a short field off a quick change in a turnover? Marshall dancing around. He's close to the 15 yard line. He'll have the first down after a gain of 10. Tuska brings him down. And that's the evolution of Marcus Marshall in this offense. He makes multiple cuts, and then shakes loose of a would be tackle from Nick DeLuca right in the hole, able to pick up more yardage and a first down inside the red zone. That's not just take the ball and run straight downhill. Sometimes you got to make your own hole. Play fake, and that one almost picked off. They're going to say it is picked off. Unbelievable catch coming from Nate Tangway. And now we have some fisticuffs and flags flying around the 30 yard line. We got a guy. We got a How about that sequence? Tangway picks it off his shoelaces. If Jared Tuska doesn't get the pressure, it never happens. But you can see some frustration, obviously. It's not lost on James Madison that they had an opportunity. And Tangway with showing tremendous hands. I don't even think he play, wears gloves as a defensive lineman. That's certainly not a gloves catch off his shoelaces. But it was almost immediate pressure. Because Shore had Riley Stapleton on the slant. It's a touchdown. But he's got pressure almost right away. We're calling Jaheed Jackson with a personal foul. The mic's not functioning. But that's just going to pad what was otherwise a disastrous sequence of events. Watch the pressure right now. It's Jackson got beat inside right well, away. Tuska gets the shot the play, on shore. Number 16, James Madison. And a great play run. by First Nate down. Tangway. North Dakota State. With the interception. Woo, I mean, fingertips. It looked like that ball might have made it to the turf. And then afterwards. Jahi Jackson again who was beaten Jackson coming back from injury didn't start this game got out there at right tackle and You see the Bison sideline they weren't having it they came onto the field Nate Tangway his first interception That'll set up North Dakota State first down and 10 Handoff off the right side goes to Anderson and he is across the midfield stripe. And of course Rogers Redding with us and Rogers when we, we just saw the North Dakota State I know in basketball you leave the bench on immediate ejection. What's what's the uh, ruling in college football. Yeah, in this case since both teams really left the bench you had a melee out there. So what they really did was just charge the, the initial hit and then it, other than that you got to charge everybody with an unsportsmanlike conduct foul which has been done sometimes. I mean that's one that's one option to do that. So what they try to do in this case since both pitches clear to either charge everybody with one or just get the one that they really started it. And they got the one to Jackson. North Dakota State. Goes with Anderson again to the 43 yard line Raven Green making a play after a six yard pickup. I'll tell you what this is another one of those quick change opportunities. We've already seen in this game the James Madison defense. They struggled after all coming off of the penalty 
on the roughing the kicker on the very first possession was really the only scoring drive we've seen from North Dakota State. Now the pick, you add the unsportsmanlike on top of that where there was a lot more bison on the field it looked like during that melee, but it went the bison's way as far as the yardage is assessed. And now they're able to pick up some yards on the ground. Done. He is tripped up. Rashad Robinson, loss of two on the play. Great job by Rashad Robinson setting this edge. You're going to see him. He's going to come rolling, screaming up into your screen. Seems right there off the edge. Lined up almost at linebacker depth. He does a great job because if you get outside and lose containment, then Anderson's still running on the outside. Second down and 12. Done. Nowhere to go. Right to the line of scrimmage and planted on the turf by Darius Carter. There hasn't been a ton of running room. Darius Carter plays opposite Andrew Anchor. That's his fifth tackle in this game. Very active from his end spot. In the run game for both offenses, they have not been able to get going on the ground. And again, another third and long for this Bison offense versus the most prolific secondary when it comes to taking the football away. And look at the rolled up man coverage that the Dukes are playing. Pressure comes, flag is down. Lance Dunn, I think, might have moved. Fighter snap, false start, number 10, offense, five yard penalty, third down. Well, Lance Dunn's going to be assigned in pass protection, and he sees the inside pressure. Watch him flinch when these linebackers roll up. Jordan Brown's in there. Well, Jordan Brown, I mean, they got him listed as a safety, but he plays more like a backer. I mean, he's got great size, 6'2", 200 pounds, a fifth-year senior. He does not look like your normal safety back there. And Lance Dunn just getting back into action. He's been out for a long time. It's a long layoff. Sometimes you get a little nervous. Stick. Going for it all. Has a man. Darius Shepard. Touchdown. Bison. 50 yards. Well, the coaches said they were going to challenge Darius Shepard to step up. He hadn't had the season that they anticipated. His numbers were down. They needed him to come up big. And boy, has he in this game. James Madison versus a three wide receiver look. They had a single safety. And Jordan Brown just was unable to get over there in time. <laughs> you talk about an aggressive play call on third and 15 to take a shot and hit a home run. Darius Shepard had 10 touchdown catches his first two years in Fargo. This is his first of his junior season. It all started with a Nate Tangway interception. Young man didn't get a chance to play against James Madison last year. Really wanted this one. And that sets up a third and 17, 50 yard touchdown pass. It is now 14 to three. Fourteen to three, the Bison out in front after a 50-yard touchdown pass on third down and 17. How did he get open? We got Raven Green, the safety. He's rolled down, and right here, here's Shepard, and he's just going to end up running flag route here. Doesn't even need to throw a move because Green, you see, he's biting up underneath. Jordan Brown was the whole safety. Doesn't have a chance to get back over here. You see, Green, he's looking on the. Let's look at the middle of the three receivers. Shepard ends up unaccounted for, uncovered, and untouched for a touchdown. And once again, the Bison able to capitalize on a miscue by the Dukes. 
That'll get through the end zone, out to the 25-yard line. Let's go down to Quinn. Yeah, former FCS legends and NFL stars, Cortland Finnegan and T.O. are here in Frisco. What brings you to town? Uh, pizza Hut, the official uh, pizza of the NCAA, and we're here to compete in a 50-yard. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be fun and exciting. Uh, as he just said, uh, we're here to compete in this 50-yard uh, uh, delivery dash obstacle for course, and uh, we're competing once again. Against each other. Any fans involved? Any fans? Well, you know what? I'm here rooting for the, for the, the JMU Dukes, and he's going with the Bisons. Right now I'm behind, but it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Chattanooga and Sanford, Dave. A couple of really outstanding players took their games to the National Football League as Klusterman makes the catch close to the 35-yard line. A couple of FCS legends, Courtland so, Finne you know, Finne Finnegan and Terrell Owens. Are going to be carrying the pizzas? Is that the deal? I guess. Deep dish? I mean, who's got the – you get the thin crust, you got an advantage. <laughs> Maybe the, the uh, path will lead them up here to us. I'm, that, that would be fantastic. We'll start the cross. Nice opening play that time by the Dukes to pick up a quick first down on this possession. Here comes some pressure from the outside again, and Shore is walloped inside the 25-yard line. That'll be a loss of 12 on the play. Caleb Butler was the first one there. Jabril Cox came flying in. Boy, these defenses are living up to their billing. They are outstanding. Well, on the Bison set the tone on the opening play of the game. Jabril Cox came on an edge blitz. They'll walk him out on the slot as he is right here, right on the hash mark. He's such a rangy player. He can cover, but he can also come with pressure and was able to get home. Shore has to break a tackle and then hardly anywhere to run. It's almost like they're playing with an extra man out there. North Dakota State all over the field. Jabril Cox with another tackle. Gain of two on the play. Hard earn yards for Brian Shore. Well, Jahee Jackson is out for this series. It's Nick Edwards out at right tackle, it appears, for JMU. And they had a little bit of difficulty. Right now, the Bison are able to get pressure almost immediately. They're getting upfield so quickly at their defensive end positions, making it very difficult for Shore, who had to break four tackles just to gain any yards back. He's been pressured seven times already. This time a clean pocket. He hit Stapleton who went up, caught it, and lost it. Stapleton saying he's down, but Cox has the football on the run. The former high school quarterback dropped at the 42-yard line. JMU, everybody on the bench says he was clearly down. Riley Stapleton pleading his case almost immediately. Ruling on the field is a fumble. First down. North Dakota Clearly State. a catch. Knee is down. National coordinator of officials, Rogers Redding, is with us here in the booth. And uh, as we look at that, Rogers, uh, what are you seeing from your vantage point? He looks like he's down. I think they'll overturn this and, and bring it back. This will go to replay. And it um, looks like to me for, for sure that knee is down before the ball comes out. So I'll be surprised if they don't Previous overturn this. fumble is under further review. Yeah, that looks pretty clear that his knee was down before that ball popped free. So we get another look at it. Now, sometimes when you slow it down, it's hard to tell when the ball actually starts out. But it looks like to me that the knee is down before there's any movement of the ball to be coming out. So I think they'll overturn this to, a, to the runner down. I'll be surprised if they don't. Yeah, they get the ball back, I think, obviously with far better field position and a fresh set of downs and really the first time in this contest where Jalen Allison's absence might have played a role and you know, as they look at this I wonder if that ball you know it might have been starting out before, yeah. before that knee goes down I mean that's what they're going to look at all these looks and that's why you get these different angles to see if that ball may have been starting out and it's really better to do this in real time because as you know, anything can look like possession if you slow it down enough. Right. And so that's why they try to get every look they can. I think the ball, it certainly looked, Rogers, as if the ball was coming away from Stapleton's body, but still 
on his forearm and yeah. in his possession. It wasn't cradled and, and high and tight necessarily. Yeah, that's right, Matt. And what they need is indisputable evidence that the ball actually was starting out rather than still in his grip, even though he may have been moving away from the body. Yeah. After further review, the ruling on the field stands as called. North wow. Dakota State's ball, first and ten. Just not enough there. Just not enough there. Not not indisputable to overturn it, so you got to let it stand. That's why the officials on the field, by the way, are caught. If it's questionable ball, let it go because replay can can come in. You've got that backup in case in case it's really close like that. So. I'm, I will say I'm surprised though. Yeah. I, I mean, I am surprised that they didn't overturn that one as we looked at it. And I guess they're saying that that movement away from his body, even though it seemed like it was in Stapleton's grip, was enough to lose control of that football before he was down. Well, the other, I mean, what they say, what they're saying is they didn't have indisputable evidence to overturn it. I see. Anderson with the carry. The last interception, the turnover, resulted in a touchdown for North Dakota State. They'll have excellent field position here at the 41-yard line. It'll be second down and 10 coming up. Well, the Dukes, they've done a good job in this game when they haven't had to come off of that quick change, a quick momentum swing. But they have to get a stop here, especially the way that their offense has been playing in this game. It is crucial that they don't allow the Bison to not only run this football down, but come away with more points. Incomplete pass. Erzendowski was the intended receiver and Bison fans certainly barking for and our coach Chris Kleiman barking for a pass interference call. Jimmy Moreland was out there in coverage. It, it definitely looked like from here on the first look that Moreland was all over the receiver. Now we've seen these officials have allowed them to play. But I'm, I'm surprised. There's a Dowski look like he was trying to work back out to the football in Moreland. He had a handful of Urs and Dowski. It's a third down and 10. Stick will try to run for it. He's got a lot of room to the 25 yard line. First down, North Dakota State after a 17 yard pickup. Well, Urzendowski, they didn't get the call on the attempted pass previously, but he has a great block in the scramble drill. Stick sees it, realizes he's got a rush lane, and he's going to win that foot race with Brandon Herford coming from that linebacking position and did a great job of getting the ball upfield and converting. One of the things that North Dakota State had to do with Easton Stick this year is protect him. They did not have a backup quarterback for almost the entire season because of an injury to Cole Davis. They said that he is a valuable runner, would see more of it because there is no next week. Big hit at the line of scrimmage. That came from Darius Carter on Lance Dunn, a loss of a yard. Seven tackles for Darius Carter. Some confusion in the blocking scheme that time, and Carter came this is free. First charge, 30 seconds so far, line. number 47, making his presence felt along that Duke defensive front. 111 to play. Timeout taken by North Dakota State as they'll look at a second down and about 11 coming up. We'll step aside as well. Back to Frisco, Texas after this. Easton Stick, 8 of 11 for 100 yards and a touchdown. Second down and 11 coming up. Quick throw to the wide side of the field. Dimitri Williams makes the catch. He'll get it to the 20-yard line, just inside the 20. Give him six. But, but I tell you what, you know, we talk about both these teams wanted to force the other offense into third and longs. James Madison's done that. Yeah, but then you've got to capitalize on the situation that you've created. You get a third and, what, 17? You give up a touchdown to Darius Shepard. A third and 10, you allow a scramble upfield to convert a first down. That was a prime opportunity for the Duke defense to get a stop and get the ball back to its offense with time here in the first half. Third down and five. Stick coming near side. Pass is caught around the 16-yard line. He's going to be about a yard shy of the line to make a pickup of four. Shepard making the catch. Rashad Robinson on the coverage. Fourth down. 
surprised that James Madison wouldn't take a timeout here. Try to preserve some clock at least to get another possession here in the first half. Timeout, North Dakota State. Second the Bison of the half. will take the timeout on fourth late. down and a yard. Well, if you don't know by now, Monday night, there's a little special game going on in Atlanta at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Georgia and Alabama playing for that national championship on ESPN Monday night. But our mega cast will have you covered from every platform, TV, radio, and digital. So many ways to watch and listen to the biggest game of the year. Coverage begins at 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific. And every production is also available on the ESPN app. I will say this. I've been doing this a long time, and I don't know that I've ever seen a game as exciting as Georgia and Oklahoma in the Rose Bowl. That was un I don't even you know, I didn't really care what, but I, it was incredible. <laughs> Rogers Rogers Redding's up here in the booth with us. He's seen a lot of football. He's over there nodding his head. That's validation. That was exciting. Timeout. Now James Madison, James Madison will want a timeout. The first charge for the half, 30 seconds in length. But you're right, Dave, you know, that Rose Bowl had a little bit of everything, all three phases of the game impacting the ultimate outcome. The first overtime in the story tradition, a lot of momentum swings, phenomenal contest. Let's go down to the field and Quint. Interesting back and forth with those timeouts. I think everybody here in Frisco expected to see the field goal kicker, Cam Pedersen, and he did not come out. They were going for it on fourth down, so Bob Trott and Coach Houston called timeout. And now here comes the offense once again. So the field goal kicker for North Dakota State, only two attempts in the last six games. Instead, they decide to go for it. And they will line up with a lot of big beef at the line of scrimmage. Fourth down and one. It's like they're trying to get him to jump. They almost did. Initially, it looked like Simeon Robinson almost Timeout. made contact State. across Third the neutral zone. The half. 30 seconds in the you come up there, you load up the formation, you hunker down. There's no play call. The quarterback's up there, and you don't call a play because you don't want your offensive line to be thinking about anything other than freeze. They almost got Robinson there. Nobody ever falls for those, Matt. <laughs> Except for when they do. <laughs> Cam Peterson now, as I said, he's only attempted two field goals in the last six games. Nine of 14 on the season, along of 47. But he's had three kicks blocked. The good news for Cam, he made three field goals on this field two years ago in the finals. I'll tell you something else to consider. Mike Houston pointed this out to us. He hasn't seen North Dakota State run a fake on a punt or a field goal in two seasons. Was concerned of Kick is on the way, and he makes it. He is now 8 of 9 inside of 39 yards. So a couple of turnovers result in 10 points for North Dakota State, and their lead is 17 to 3 with 39 seconds to go here before halftime. Remember, this is a, a North Dakota State team that trailed 17 to nothing in the semis last year. Tied it up, but eventually lost by 10. But Looks like they may take a 17-3 lead here into the locker room unless James Madison can find some offense. And right now, if you're Chris Kleiman, you got to be thrilled with the way your defense was able to step up big. You get a short field, a red zone possession off a great punt return, and the Dukes are knocking on the door. You're able to force a field goal, and then off of a fumble, a sack, Easton Stick puts the ball on the ground, and you're able to not only get the football back, but put your offense at the scoring opportunity, you come away with points there. That's so far to me, the difference in the ball game is the way North Dakota State's defense has responded in those adverse situations on the quick changes relative to the way James Madison's unit has struggled in those same scenarios. Numbers don't lie sometimes, and that's the case here today. When you look at offensive yards, 163 for North Dakota State, 74 for James Madison. Marshall will take the kick around the five. He's out to the 25-yard line. ESPN is proud to bring you coverage of the FCS championship game and other NCAA championships. For more information, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. 
James Madison, 26 consecutive victories. It is the second longest in the history of the FCS, only behind the 33 in a row won by North Dakota State a couple of years ago. First down and 10 for James Madison. Trying to loft it up again to Stapleton. Flags come in. Stapleton. Boy, they have gone to him a lot this afternoon. They're going after that same matchup that ultimately resulted in the fumble. Josh Hayes, once again, the true freshman. He's being forced to play more in this game. We mentioned the injury to Jalen Allison during the game versus Sam Houston State. Pass interference, number 35. Defense. What a catch. That penalty was declined. Result of the play, first down. Boy, that angle shows you how acrobatic that catch was from the big fella, 6'5", 218 pounds. He played the bank off of Hayes' head. 28-yard <laughs> gain. Ball at the 46. Sure. Again to Stapleton, out of bounds. That'll stop the clock, 21 seconds to play before halftime. Bridges on the coverage, a gain of seven. Well, they brought Bridges over to this side of the field, got Hayes away from him. Hayes playing the far side, number one receiver to the top of your screen, is now the true freshman who's been targeted on the last two JMU passes downfield. Sure, over the middle. This one's caught. James Madison does have a couple of timeouts. That time able to hit Terrence Alls. A mismatch in the slot. Oftentimes he'll be matched up with the linebacker. This time it's Drabil Cox, who's lined up over Alls. Sure. Going toward the end zone, and that's a tackle in the end zone, or right outside of it. A couple of flags come in. The clock will stop at six seconds. The freshman again, and they've got him rattled at this point. He gave up a big throw. Pass interference, number 35, defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. You know, Matt Entz moves him over there because he thinks he can hide him. It's not often that they'll go to the opposite side of the field to that Time number one called. receiver. James Madison, second charge of the half, 30 you see, seconds Hayes, You mentioned he tackled him. He was all up in Eldridge's chest. You see Shore, he didn't need the P.I. to Riley Stapleton who made an acrobatic catch. And you can see they're just trying to talk Josh Hayes down a little bit. Again, a couple of injured corners for North Dakota State, Allison and Wimbush, a couple of, especially Allison, maybe their best cover guy, both guys outstanding. Not 100%, not playing, so you're having to go to the bench. And it's hard to defend catches like we just saw a moment ago from Riley Stapleton. Well, I mean, the coverage is, Stapleton can't even get his hands up there. Hayes has got his, Stapleton's right arm pinned down. It's his left arm pinned against the back of Hayes' helmet. And by the time he got his arm up there, he was able to complete that catch. Unbelievable play that time. Here's Stapleton down here, singled up. And a whistle will stop the clock. Timeout taken by Part James Madison. Timeout was called. Third and final charge timeout for James Madison. 30 seconds in length. Right. Need to put two seconds back on the clock. And they do so. The last time they were on this end of the field, Shore was going to try to hit Stapleton on a slant. They gave him, they were playing outside leverage. Stapleton had the had it, it was wide open. Ended up having pressure, resulted in an interception to Tangway. It looks like they're going to kick it with seven seconds left. What do you think about this decision? They were lined up to make a play to the end zone, and now with six seconds, they're going to maybe. You know, Second with, thought is let's not give up points. And the way that they, they were rolling, you know, take a shot and let number 10 maybe make a play for you. You agree? Maybe. I mean, kick a field goal right here. It's still a two possession game. Do you think you could have got that playoff though with six seconds? Absolutely. And, had a, and still had a chance for a field goal? Well, Radke's kick is on the way and from 21 yards out. He'll make it a 17 to 6 game. I just think he could have got it. I know it's risky. Sure it is. But I, I, ta I take a shot at the end zone. Yeah. Quick fade. Ball comes out fast. The ball's either complete or incomplete fast. 
They had Marquise Bridges down there checking Stapleton. That was a chance to make it a one possession game. But how about a, a drive that went four plays, 69 yards in 28 seconds? Clearly their best offensive possession of the afternoon. And they just keep trying to feed old Riley Stapleton, who had a good catch on the prior drive but coughed it up. Well, what to watch here in the second half is do they feel they found a little blood in the water? You know, the timing for North Dakota State might be good. You get your true freshman corner yeah. into the locker room. Let him calm down a little bit if you can, because clearly he was rattled. And keep in mind, if he doesn't strip that football from Stapleton on what was somewhat of a contested call, rule the fumble on the field, he had just given up a big play. They come right back after him. You get the P.I. on the completion to Stapleton. Matt Entz, the defensive coordinator for the Bison, tries to hide Hayes to the opposite side of the field, gets him away from Stapleton. Two plays later, the Dukes go right back after the true freshman and get another P.I. Little squib kick taken by Williams. He's running around trying to find some room, and what he ran into was a purple jersey. Mike Cobbs making the special teams hit. So the first half is in the books. A couple of turnovers led to 10 points for North Dakota State. They hit a 50-yard touchdown pass on a third down and 17. They lead it 17 to 6 after 30 minutes of football. Let's go down to Quinn. Coach, what was the single key development in that first half? Well, we were able to create the turnovers and get a couple of short fields. We had the big play, the big pass play. We need to make an explosive play. Shep made the explosive play. Two really good football teams, two excellent defenses. Got 30 more minutes of great football. All of a sudden, they're taking some shots downfield against your corners. What are your options, or how do you deal with that? Those kids will play their tails off. We'll uh, help them when we can. We just got to be able to move the football on offense, try to keep their offense on the sideline. Thank you, Coach. 17-3 is our score here at the half. Stay tuned after the break for Joe Tessitore, Mac Brown, and Booger McFarland from the side of the college football playoff national championship game in Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome back to the NCAA FCS championship presented by Northwestern Mutual. It is a gorgeous day here in Frisco, Texas, just outside of Dallas, North Dakota State. James Madison, the top two seeds going toe to toe, a rematch of a semifinal game a year ago. North Dakota State lost that one by 10, seeking a little revenge. James Madison undefeated, 26 consecutive victories. They trail by 11 with 30 more minutes of football, unless we head to overtime. Dave Neal alongside Matt Stinchcomb will join Quinn Kesnick in just a moment down on the sidelines, get his thoughts. But, Matt, obviously we came in thinking about two outstanding defenses. Uh, your perception of how that's played out against these very high-powered offenses as well. Well, the offenses have not put up big numbers in this yeah. game. It's a lot, largely been born of shorter fields and how these defenses have responded when you've had a quick change. And ultimately, so far, the story in this game to me has been the way the Bison defense has found ways to get stops and force field goals, generate a turnover off their own turnover, offense giving the ball to JMU on a very short field. The Bison defense got it right back to their offense. They've been able to capitalize off the turnovers as well. I think that's been the difference in this game. Neither one of these offenses have found their comfort zone. Now, it looked like at the end of that first half, right. maybe James Madison found something with some of their downfield passing game. And what did they find? Well, I think more than anything, they opened up the formation. Part of that's right. a function of the time that's left on the clock. You don't have time to be methodical. It makes sense to have those perimeter players out there. But the other piece of it is North Dakota State, they're down some defensive backs. I'll be surprised if we don't see the Dukes try to open things up in the second half. Well, we certainly did have some excitement in the first 30 minutes. A couple of key plays to revisit here before we get set for third quarter football and this is one of them right here how about the play from nate tangway your defensive lineman with the pick and tusca with the pressure would have been a touchdown to stapleton who was open on the slant as it was goes the other way and the bison on a third and 17 convert on a touchdown throw to shepherd and then another third and long where james madison's able to get the down and distance they want stick converts but right before half it seemed as if Brian Shore, Riley Stapleton, that connection that's been so prolific in the playoffs, started to get rolling a little bit. You can see the numbers in total yardage. Both of these offenses that have put up a ton of points and yards throughout this season. 
have been very dampened by the defenses. Take nothing away from those units, but it's been their response to situational football that's been the difference in this game so far. Let's go down to Quinn. We have got to start winning some one-on-ones in our passing game on the outside, the words of James Madison head coach Mike Houston. He also pointed to his decision to go for the field goal there before the first half, guys, saying that they had a back shoulder fade they were thinking of, but they played it safe and kicked the field goal. One-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside, Dave. Quinn, thanks. Just interesting, I were talking about during halftime about, you know, six seconds, that is a really, you're rolling the dice. But we both thought that they could have got a playoff in six seconds. They could have got a playoff. Yeah. And, and, you know, you look at it, it's you have your field goal unit ready. You know that if it drops incomplete, and it looked as if that's exactly what they were going to run. Heck, they even snapped the ball before they said, yeah. no, a timeout was called. And to me, when you look at the way that height advantage is and the way Stapleton high pointed that pass earlier in the drive, there was an opportunity. Here's the kick. North Dakota State will get the football first. And, boy, they have had some success coming out of the locker room. They have scored a touchdown on their opening possession in the third quarter on 9 of 14 opportunities. Well, we touched on it to start this game. Now, the Bison offense didn't start out that great with the opening possession in this contest. That was extended by the roughing of the punter. But they were able to come away with the touchdown. And as you see there, those second half starts. And when you're already playing with the lead, it's a two possession ball game. And you've got a chance if you continue that trend to even stretch that further. They've outscored their opponents in the second half by 190 points. <laughs> First down and 10. They'll go handoff on the ground to Lance Dunn. And he'll get it out to the 29 yard line, a gain of four. Easton Stick. Pretty solid first half, to say the least. 10 of 13, 110 yards, a touchdown. And you can add another 16 yards rushing. Of course, a couple of sacks factored into that. Of course, was tutored by Carson Wentz. Matter of fact, would travel on the road as a youngster, learn everything Carson would teach him about how to play the position, how to be a leader. There's a handoff to Seth Wilson. Carson, of course, uh, loyal to his Bison watching this one. Talking about Easton Stick. I'm Thanks glad you clarified. I thought he was talking about Brian Shore there for a second. <laughs> All right, I'm glad he's talking about Easton Stick, his former roommate. It's always good to get some support from... Uh, from the next level. Not a big fan of the staff, it looks like. <laughs> well, he says it's gnarly. He might like it. Gnarly might be the, the, oh, like the, the compliment. Way, right. Kind of a more of a, right. more of a tubular sense. Certainly wish Carson all the best as he gets healthy. Pressure and down goes Stick. Boy, not a whole lot of time for either quarterback. Robinson with a second sack today. That's a loss of eight. Well, they're sliding the protection away from Robinson. So that leaves Bryce Messner on an island with Robinson because they're going to bring edge pressure and actually pick it up. Rashad Robinson is going to come into your screen. You see him picked up by Zach Johnson. But you end up leaving your left guard on an island. That's what happens when you slide protection. It was perfect to pick up the edge pressure, but you leave some one-on-ones on the inside. And the second time in this game, Robinson's made a big play. They'll hand it off to Dunn. Oh, and he is racked up and dropped at the 29-yard line by Brandon Herford. What a play by the outside backer. Happy New Year. 6'1", 240 pounds. Oh, that, that is a hit. That, that is just awesome. And a downhill. What do you think about Dunn? Welcome back to the game, my man. So from the 30, it is third down and 17. Trying to set up a little screen. And boy, JMU all over it. It'll be fourth down. Well, it goes without saying that's exactly what you're looking for defensively for James Madison. You finish the first half with a nice drive. You come away with points and you've got a little bit of momentum. What you don't want and what you can't have is for the Bison to do what they typically do, opening that second half, stretching the lead and possessing the ball. Great job by the defense getting this ball back 
to the Duke offense with an opportunity to continue what they started in the first half. Cooks punts it away. Amos breaks a couple of tackles, gets a block to the 40, to the 34, and drop there. Another excellent return for the Dukes, a return of 30 yards. And Amos got a great block from Jimmy Moreland. Well, they glad to have him in this ball game. Watch number six, lead up in the hole. Great job. Giving Amos another opportunity to stick his foot in the ground and get upfield. And the punt return game has been big for the Dukes. Now they have to capitalize on the good field position. Short field at the 34 of North Dakota State. Four man rush. Dump it off. And Marshall just dropped it. That's a second drop out of Marshall. They tried to set up a screen in the first quarter. He drops it. That time again, Marshall out of the backfield, and he had room to run. He would have to shake loose of the tackle of Marquise Bridges, who broke off the coverage, but it would have had to have been a nice open field tackle, tackle versus a running back that's got good balance, but he's got to make that catch first. That's four clear drops. Guys aren't helping the quarterback, Brian Shore, much. In that department, second down and ten with a shoulder fake. That time the pass is caught. They'll spot the forward progress out near the 20 yard line. See where they will spot it. Gain of 12. They'll spot it inside the 20 at the 19. Alls covered by Dempsey. Alls, a transfer from Duke, had 53 catches coming into this game. Missed the first four games because of suspension. Has been not targeted very often this game. So spot it right outside the 20 and sure. Well, lunge forward for a couple of yards. Sure. Career record holder at JMU for pass touchdowns, passing yards, completions, total offense. The senior out of Ilford, Pennsylvania. Hands it off to Marshall. And he is dropped around the 17, a gain of two. Blake Williams making the play for the Bison. Well, he got down in the red zone earlier. They substitute him out now. Kusterman was a the guy they tried to leak out. As it is, now you've got Stapleton to the left side of the formation. And Terrence Alls in the slot to the boundary. On the top of your screen. Here's Alls right there. Third down and five. Shore will keep it himself to the 10. Spins to the five yard line. Give him 11 yards. It'll be first and goal for the Dukes. We talked about at the top of this game that Brian Shore could hurt you as a runner. We hadn't seen him do it much. Most of it has been for his life, trying to keep some plays alive. This time, a design QB draw couldn't have been timed any better. Defensively, the Bison had voided both their defensive tackles playing wide techniques over the guards and an opportunity for sure to get up and pick up some easy yardage. Marshall off the right side. Powers his way down to the one yard line. A gain of four, second and goal. Nice block by All-American Aaron Stinney. Able to get some nice push backside the whole wave. Allowing Marshall to get downhill. Now knocking on the door of the Bison and a quick start for the Dukes here in the second half. They will throw for it to the corner of the end zone looking for Stapleton. Josh Hayes back there in coverage. Josh Hayes the guy we mentioned. Well, at the end of the first half, the guy that was being targeted got targeted three times, gave up some two big, two big plays. Second and one, and yeah. you're throwing it. I guess you know you like your chances on third down if you're coming back at it. So now third and goal from the one. Marshall, left side. He's into the end zone. Touchdown. 
What a start to the third quarter for the Dukes. That's what they needed. We had to get a stop on defense and then capitalize on offense. And it was set up by yet another fantastic punt return by Amos. You get the ball in plus territory. You have to come away with points. And this time, the Dukes able to get it into the end zone for the first time in this game. So they get to stop defensively. Brandon Herford with a big play on Dunn. Forcing a punt. Amos with a great return. Sets up the Dukes for a one yard plunge. And we got ourselves a ball game. The NCAA FCS Football Championship, presented by Northwestern Mutual, is brought to you by City. City, welcome what's next. Boy, both teams had a great time on Thursday night with Miracle League athletes, an annual FCS Championship community outreach event. The Miracle League motto, every child deserves the chance to play. JMU, by the way, they won the, uh, their Miracle League buddies won the contest 42-35. Nice picture, great stuff. Yes, this may be my favorite part of all the postseason play is the community opportunity, community involvement opportunities that they present. Look how happy those kids are, the college kids too. JMU fans pretty happy right now after a defensive stop and then a touchdown to make it a four-point game. Anderson down to the 20-yard line. Boy, things have changed on that Duke sideline. Quinn. What does it look like down there? Yeah, for the first time today, this is a team playing to win, not playing to lose. And they're actually having fun. I, I think in, you look back to that first half, they were tense, they were tentative, they were overthinking things. They're relaxed now, and, and you're starting to see a bunch of guys smiling and having fun. Great energy on the Duke sideline. Well, let's see if they can maintain that against this North Dakota, North Dakota State offense at Came into this game averaging 40 points a contest, second best in the FCS. Anderson left side. Boy, there's just nothing there. Gain of a yard. There's a lot of bodies packed in to that formation. And the defense isn't scared to be in there. Kyrie Hawkins, emotional leader. Simeon Robinson as well up there. Hawkins is those, one of those guys we were talking. The defensive coordinator tried to say it's just so intense. It looks like he's ready to hit one of our own guys. We've got to dial him down a notch. They came out of the locker room smoking here in the second half. 45 career starts for Hawkins. Pressure comes. Stick. How does he get out of that trouble? And has the first down at the 31. That was close to being a 10 yard loss and he picks up 11 or 12 on the run. Darius Carter again, his fourth pressure of the game. Simeon Robinson as well and Stick did a great job not only maintaining his balance but his composure to be able to get up field and convert the chains. Otherwise you're looking at a negative yardage situation once again and already the Dukes have capitalized on the excellent field position. Stick is 33 and 3 as a starter. I'll go with a stretch play with Seth Wilson, and he is stretched right into the bench. But a flag comes down the middle of that line. Personal foul, illegal block below the waist, number 66, 68. Offense, 15-yard penalty, still first down. Zach Johnson, 68. Rogers, where do you, Rogers Redding, of course, uh, NCAA coordinator of officials, something that uh, officials are always looking at, those low blocks.
That is incomplete. Looking for Dimitri Williams. And a huge turn of events. You get that penalty, get you behind, and then a quick turn and a quick incompletion. We just talked about picking up the first down. You got to get some, that possession rolling, and instead, you end up going backwards. Second and nearly impossible. Boy, nowhere to run to the 21 yard line. Gain of six. And what magic do you have now? We talked about the third downs in the first half where the Bison found ways to not only convert but capitalize. One for a touchdown on a similar down and distance. But now you're in negative territory. Changes things completely. The third down, you look if you can't pick up some positive yards punt this football away and try to play field position early in the second half. Well, they converted a 50-yard touchdown on a third and 17 in the first half. Don't know how many of these type of plays you have in the playbook. That one is batted in the air and almost caught. Williams sliding. Still would have been shy by a yard or two, but the Dukes get the stop and force a punting situation. A legal low block was the swing in this offensive possession. We talked about how important both of these stats recognized to avoid those negative yardage plays. Penalties are the same, just as bad as a tackle for loss or a sack. Amos has been dynamite in the return game today. That one will be down near midfield just a 27 yard punt momentum is wearing purple right now and a win well last night the 2017 stats award banquet was held here in Frisco headlined by Jeremiah Briscoe the quarterback of Sam Houston State winning the Walter Payton Award for the second consecutive year other winners Included Darius Jackson of Jacksonville State as the Buck Buchanan Award winner as a Defensive Player of the Year. Will Hilly of Austin P won the Eddie Robinson Coach of the Year Award. Top freshman went to Bryson Armstrong, Kennesaw State linebacker. Jerry Rice Award is that one in the Scholar Athlete. Jake Winicky of South Dakota State as James Madison hits Riley Stapleton for a gain of 12. And boy, Riley is. Having a heck of a game as you look at all the awards. Congratulations to all those guys. Uh, fantastic seasons. Of course, culminating here with the number one and number two seeds squaring off at Toyota Stadium. Over the middle. That one's caught again by Stapleton. That is seven catches this afternoon for Riley Stapleton. Up to 107 yards. He's been nearly unstoppable in the playoffs, and he's just now coming alive here in the second half. And once again, they've moved Josh Hayes. He caught the previous catch versus the true freshman. He's opposite side of the field, working against Marquise Bridges now, Stapleton. They'll go to the wide side of the field and might have lost a yard. Ismail Hyman making the catch. You see what JMU is doing right now. And they saw what they had in the two minute drill. They opened things up. You're versus playing a team that's down defensive backs. Jalen Allison, we've mentioned he's out with a knee, the best cover man. They're forced to play some younger players. Take advantage of that with some of your perimeter players. You got Bridges and Hayes at the corner spots for North Dakota State over the middle, and that one is picked off. Marquise Bridges. The former wide receiver who had two picks in the semifinal game comes up with a pick here in the national championship. Ruling on the field is an interception. North Dakota State's ball. If Shore gets more on this pass, it's a touchdown. But he floats one and it's behind. He's trying to hit Hyman. And Bridges gets underneath the route and comes away with the interception. The second time in this game 
where the Bison are able to get a key turnover to deny a scoring opportunity. Just talking about these young corners. Marquise Bridges, the sophomore out of Minneapolis. You see Shore, he just kind of floats that ball out there. He stab it in there, hit Hyman in the hands, and come over with six. North Dakota State with the football when we come back. Four-point game. James Madison just had a golden opportunity slip right through their hands. And now North Dakota State will have the football at the three-yard line after the interception by the sophomore Marquise Bridges. And you look at those turnovers, three today by James Madison. The Bison have made him pay with ten points. And turnovers are always a huge story, but in a game like this, even more so. And it's really been flipped a little bit. When you think about James Madison came into this game, they had gained 43 turnovers. It's just it's a staggering statistic. And, you know, obviously padded by last week's game versus South Dakota State, 10 turnovers, six picks, four fumbles. Three of those fumbles coming from the quarterback position. And this one, sure, if he just has a better ball, he comes away with the touchdown instead of giving the ball back to his opponent. We'll go with Anderson again. He gets to the 10 and stopped there. Herford making the tackle. Gain of four. Yeah, last week just or the semifinal game just crazy for James Madison. They forced a turnover on the first five possessions of that game. Which is insane. What's even harder to comprehend is you only come away with seven points. And they ended up exploding there in the second half. It's to capitalize off of those turnovers. And, you know, we talked about in the first half is looks like Rashad Robinson's shaking up. The defensive backs for the Dukes, seven interceptions on the year, and has made some nice plays in this game as the trainers attend to him. Monday night on ESPN, college football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T between Georgia and Alabama at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, 8 o'clock Eastern time, also streaming live on that ESPN app. An all-SEC final. It's like an SEC championship, man. Two SEC teams played in the same venue just a month later. I don't think, though, if Georgia loses that game, they're going to give their cha SEC championship. No, they'll hang on to that one. <laughs> right. They will hang on to that one. <laughs> but you start thinking about Nick Chubb and Sony Michelle. Nobody, no duo has been better in the history of college football than those two young men. 8,284 yards combined. How huge was it for that program that both those guys decided to come back? You know, in some ways, that lackluster season a year ago by Georgia set up the successes of this year as you see Rashad Robinson he left the field under his own power this is the coming out offense you know, your playbook is so limited that they got it to a third and manageable with another condensed formation stick will throw it's his tight end out over the 20 to the 22 yard line that is Connor Wentz Carson Wentz's cousin with a gain of 12 yeah, he shows up. No big Jay Walker in the pregame show over on ESPNU was saying Connor Wentz needed to have a big game. We talked about the tight ends needing to play a role, not just as receivers, but forcing the Dukes to flip their strength of their defense based on how they're lined up. And again, another multiple tight end set. Two tight ends in for the Bison. Little play action. Pass is caught at the 25 yard line. Nice grab there by Ben Ilias, who is now 20 receptions on the year. A senior at a Lidgerwood, North Dakota. They do so much with those guys. You know, I mentioned the multiple tight ends. At that time, Ellison flexed back into the backfield and was a fullback, and they leaked him right out of the backfield. Said Elias Ellison. There's a lot My of apologies. Them. Got three apologies. or four of them out there at a the time. Tied in to combine for 46 catches on the year. It's been a valuable spot for the Bison offensively. Boy, crashing in from the corner 
is Jimmy Moreland to make the play. That is seven tackles now for Jimmy. And that was a corner shoot. Jimmy Moreland was coming right away. A run down blitz that time by number six. And this is one of the things where when we were talking with Courtney Messingham, even Chris Kleiman, he said we need as running backs, we need to be able to make their secondary miss us in the hole. We have to somehow or other break those tackles because we know the Dukes are coming that time perfectly timed by Jimmy Moreland. Another third down. Stick gets out of trouble again, but he's tripped up. Shy of the first down, gets a yard. It's Kyrie Hawkins who came in leading the team with 101 tackles all the year. And it all started with Darius Carter. Once again, he's going to beat Zach Johnson inside right now, and it forces Stick to step up. And Kyrie Hawkins is able to track down Easton Stick and get a tackle shy of the yardage needed. The first half, Stick was able to break tackles and get upfield to convert. This time, the Dukes forcing a punt. Safety, Jordan Brown. Looks like he's got a cramp in that right leg. He'll pop up. They'll certainly hold their collective breath on the sideline. Jordan Brown means so much to that Duke defense. Not just a secondary, a box player and run support. Not to mention, leads the FCS in interceptions with nine and a first team All American. Punting situation for Jackson Coots. Boy, there are 10 Dukes at the line of scrimmage. They are coming. This time, there is no flag. Fair catch called for, taken at the 45. Another yeah, short yeah, punt, only 29 yeah. yards, but Coots does get it away. Ah, the, the block is there. It's almost like Jimmy Moreland overran this thing. Watch number six come shooting into your screen. He was back there so quickly. I think he was worried about another rough in the punter if he were to not get the ball. I think that's exactly what it was. Because Moreland was up. He got upfield so quickly. And I think he was a little bit gun shy. I think that is a sure block if there wasn't a rough in the punter earlier in this game. First down and ten. Etheridge comes in motion, but they'll go inside handoff to Trey Sharp, who will pick up four. A one possession game. You were able to open things up on the previous possession. You move the ball downfield. You get a bad ball and give it back. But you've got great field position to work with. Obviously, plenty of time left in this contest with only a four point deficit. Bringing five. Pass is low. Looking for Stapleton, who's had a heck of a day catching the football with seven catches for 107 yards. And he has certainly been a difference maker here in the postseason for the Dukes. He had 19 receptions in the regular season, but now has 23 catches in playoff football. Drops back at the 40 yard line. Derek Tuska, a loss of eight. Pressure came from Caleb Butler. And it didn't even look like a full bore rush either. No, it was almost like a mush rush initially, it seemed like. Let's see if we can't contain him. They only brought three. But you see, once again, you know, James Madison has struggled this game with the inside move of the defensive ends. Right now, the Bison defenders, especially their defensive end position, they've been able to win on the inside rush. Line drive kick that will hit at the 14 to be down there. That'll be a 44 yard kick, 17 13 our score with 18 seconds to go in the third quarter. Hey, ESPN is proud to bring you coverage of the FCS championship game and other NCAA championships along the way. For more information, go to NCAA.com. It's the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. And somebody's walking out of here with a nice looking trophy this afternoon. Both these teams, as we mentioned, 
The last six national titles represented on the field right here. Five of those going to the Bison. That upset victory in the semifinals last year by the Dukes, and they're looking to build on last year's title. Stick twisted and dropped. He picks up a yard, and that very well may be the final play of this third quarter. James Madison puts seven on the board to make it a four-point game. Quarter. Fifteen minutes of football left at the FCS national title. Number one, James Madison. Number two, North Dakota State. The final 15 minutes coming up for the national championship. These two teams met last year in the semifinals. The Dukes stopping the run of North Dakota State at five. Who will take home the trophy today? Anderson, perhaps his best run off the right side. He'll pick up 10. That third quarter dominated by a James Madison team that came out of the locker room ready to play. But now we head to the fourth quarter, and how does North Dakota State find a little bit of offense? They got to do exactly what they just did there. You know, they already had a coming out offense. They get a penalty, set them back, start a drive off. This is a good way to jump start it. They're not going to go into a tempo. That's not what they do. This is an opportunity. They're playing with the lead, but you still have to sequence together plays to where you maintain a possession. A lot of it is positive yardage on first down. Anderson. Running hard out over the 30 to the 31 yard line. A pickup of seven. Turnovers have been a story in this one. A couple of turnovers have led to 10 points now for North Dakota State. Easton Stick having a solid game, 12 out of 18 throwing the football. But three turnovers by the Dukes. Riley Stapleton continues his hot hand in postseason football. Seven catches today. I mean, those last two from JMU, those are the two that tell the story. It's the season high turnovers. Missing opportunities, one in the red zone, and then Stapleton keeping the Dukes in this game offensively. Second down and three. Anderson. They'll spot him just shy of the 35-yard line. That'll be real close to the line to make. Let's see if they make a move here. It'll be third down and short, about a half a yard. On the previous two plays, Courtney Messingham dialing up the same running play to the outside. We're able to get a puller on the play side from your guard. Sometimes your center gets out in front. They're able to get downhill. That time an inside A-gap pull to the weak side. But third and short, this is where the Bison make a living offensively. Very proficient in this down and distance. Third and short. Boy, it was a big hole for Dunn. He slipped coming through that hole, or it could have been maybe a few more yards. Needed one, got five. Well, I think Dunn was anticipating some resistance. Sometimes those runners, they get to the line of scrimmage. They're expecting contact. He already had that forward lean working, and as we mentioned, just now getting back into service. Missed the majority of this season, and certainly the playoffs just now back and available, but enough to get the conversion on the first down. Over 2,000 yards in Dunn's career rushing the football. You see the Bison staying with these heavy formation sets, two tight end sets. Here's Dunn again. He picks up two. I'll tell you how good Dunn has been in his career. He's averaged 7.9 yards a carry in his career. That's pretty good, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> He's hurting his average every time he gets one. Gets a touch at this game so far because the Dukes have done, as you mentioned, you know, the Anderson run just a few plays ago was the best run of this half for the Bison. There have not been explosives in the rushing attack. We've seen that. We saw it in the semifinals versus the Bearcats of Sam Houston State. Big runs coming from the rushing attack. James Madison's done a great job of containing that so far. Stick looking to throw, plants his foot, and airmails it into the bench area. 
Bob Trot, the D coordinator for the Dukes, he was ready for this, recognizes that off play action, this is what they want to be able to do. Some of these half rollouts, see if they can't buy your second level and linebackers to buy up. Nowhere to go, well defended in coverage downfield. On third and eight, you see the conversion percentage for North Dakota State this year on third downs. That is top 10 in the FCS. Anderson back in the game at running back. That was Darius Shepard. He's shown up big on third downs in this game. Four man rush. Almost picked off. Jimmy Moreland stepped right in front of Erzendowski and almost had the interception. Well, they don't drop many on the back end at James Madison. No, they don't. Erzendowski. He did just enough. You see that that time Erzendowski is the DB. Jimmy Moreland is between the quarterback and the ball. That's the second time we've seen in this game where a Bison receiver turns into a DB and does just enough. Otherwise, Moreland catches that one going the other way. That could have been a pick six. Four consecutive punts here in the second half for the Bison. Amos. Will return it coming near side and he'll get out of bounds around the 30 yard line. So the Dukes have the football. They are down for 11 22 to play. Well, welcome back to Frisco Texas the FCS National Championship game. James Madison quarterback Brian Shore had exactly one offer coming out of high school. That was to Miami of Ohio back in 2013. When Don Treadwell, the coach of Miami of Ohio, left and was replaced by Chuck Martin, that offer disappeared. Shore had to go to Lackawanna Junior College, where during the spring he put together some tape. He sent it around the country. He only had one taker. That was JMU. They had just uh, had a quarterback transfer out. A couple years later, here he is looking for a back-to-back -back national championships. And he'll have the football with 11.20 to play in the game. They go five wide, caught and dropped. Etheridge, they're going to say incomplete. Close to another turnover. Bridges back there in coverage. Ruling on the field is an incomplete forward pass. Second down. Yeah, I don't think he ever yeah. possessed that football. Kind of juggling around the whole time. Marquise Bridges came in there to break it up. And, you know, Etheridge had been targeted a lot, got up, drew a pass interference in the end zone late in the first half. But sure, you know, a guy that's grown into this role, replaced a really good player in Bad Lee, and has grown into the role, earned the respect of his teammates over time. Pressure comes, sure. Near side. This time, Etheridge holds on to it. The guy is a starting quarterback is 29 and three and you mentioned had to replace Vad Lee maybe one of the best players to ever put on a Duke's uniform a Georgia Tech transfer quarterback who had an outstanding two years then he had to beat out South Carolina transfer Connor Mitch to win the job two years ago and coach Houston telling us that's really when they felt like he grew up having to to face that battle for this job. Felt that that competition gave him an edge. You see the offense looking to the sideline. Once again, the Bison also checking their defensive set. Four-man rush this time. Shore diving for the line to make, and he'll have it. Nick DeLuca making the tackle. But coaches, when they, you know, what do you like about him? And one of the first things that came out of Coach Houston's mouth was he's just tough. He plays almost like a linebacker. Well, I'll tell you what, he ran this ball like a fullback. You see him diving for the line to make, to make great awareness to just get the yardage needed. Nowhere to go with the football, convert the chains. He'll run it again, and there is no chance. Bison defenders everywhere, a loss of two, board. The first one there. Steidel also coming in. A defensive front for the Bison, they need to step up now. They need to try to get some of that pressure again because we've seen Shore when he's been on target. He's had a couple off target throws, but when he has, there has been opportunity to throw downfield versus this undermanned Bison secondary. They need 12 on second down. Shore throws it, has a man, and it's dropped. Terrence Alls 
and hit him right in the hands. I mean, it couldn't have been a better throw. And the second drop by Alls, but this time it was an on-target throw from Shore. This is the first play of the game. It was ruled a reception, looked incomplete. There's a bad ball that should have been caught by Alls. Another drop by Hymans. The Shore trying to get the ball downfield. Etheridge can't come up with it. Marshall with yet another drop. And none bigger than that last one by Alls, who was in coverage with Nick DeLuca. He runs away from DeLuca with the ball in his hands. Pressure comes up the middle. Shore dropped at the 32-yard line. A loss of seven. Chris Board came flying in to disrupt that play from the get-go. Jordheim will get credit for the sack, but Borg came in untouched. Exactly right, Dave. It was Borg that got Shore off of his mark. Watch number one on the inside. Flushes him up. DeLuca comes in there and cleans up the rest. Affect the passer. No one understands that more than James Madison. Line drive kick. Shepard fair catches it. 35 yard punts. Boy, the drops have hurt James Madison today. This one will sting. It was right on the money. The NCAA FCS Football Championship is presented by Northwestern Mutual. Spend your life living. Boy, it's been a great afternoon of football here at the FCS National Championship game. A record crowd on hand at Toyota Stadium, which opened back in 2005. 19,090 on hand. It has just been a marvelous setting for what is shaping up to be a fantastic finish. Anderson will get the carry and tell you what these are the situations where North Dakota State really excels. They have a power run game. They love to chew up the clock. This is kind of what they do. This is what they do typically in this game. They really haven't been able to put together any methodical drives so far. The Bison defense has been able to overcome short fields from an offense that they just hasn't been able to string together series. Really, the best series of the game, probably the opening one that was extended by the penalty on the punt. They'll go Anderson again, trying to stretch it out to the right side. Slips a tackle and has flipped up around the 41, but an injured Bison player. Looks like an offensive lineman down around the 36-yard line. Looked like it was Colin Connor, the left tackle, and he's going to hop off. How about that? That's Bison tough. Jeez. He doesn't put any weight How on his right leg and hops all the way over to the bench to get evaluated. He's like, don't touch me. Yeah, man, I tell you what, I like, that's better than flopping around on the field like a fish or something. The guy can get off the field, and he does. Third down and a couple of yards. Boy, Stick is hammered as he gets rid of that football. Shepard makes the catch, but Easton Stick well, oh, took one right to the chest. Darius Carter now doing what the Bison have been doing right underneath of Colin Connor's backup, Luke Bacon. Oh. He gets beaten right now coming off the bench. Cold hadn't been out there. He's not ready for it. Darius Carter having himself a game. Eight tackles, two tackles for loss, a sack, and three pressures. That's an unbelievable stat line. Give credit to Stick for hanging in there, making the play. Now they run a little sweep to the right side to Lance Dunn. He'll pick up six. Boy, just the old student body right, buddy. Pull them and go. They, they got something going here. What they're doing is they're pulling their play side guard, their right guard, Austin Coonert, and their center, Tanner Bolson. And they've been able to capture the edge. It creates an angle, some pin and pull technique. 
The tackle blocks down on whoever's covering up your guard. Your guard pulls around and gets out in front. They've run that play with success here in the fourth quarter. Second down. There's Dunn, kicks it to the outside. Out of bounds around the 25. Raven Green pops him on the sideline, but a gain of 20 yards. That time, great vision by Dunn. And you see him, that's just, they're running another A-gap power, and he ends up running right where right guard Austin Cooner pulled from. Bruce Anderson popped. Run after run versus Sam Houston State doing that exact same thing. If you don't have it play side, you stick it in the backside A-gap, and Dunn's able to rip off a big run. Approaching six minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. They'll go with Dunn again. Boy, James Madison needs to bow their head here and at least force the field goal. And once again, you know, once Courtney Messingham finds something that works, he's going to stick with it. They went with the exact same play that time to the opposite side and again Dunn sees the backside cut and able to pick up positive yards and you're right the Duke's got to figure it out because right now North Dakota State no they haven't piled up points here in the second half but the time of possession they're limiting opportunities for James Madison Anderson he stops at the line of scrimmage. Maybe fall forward for a, a yard. But it'll be third down coming up. And that clock continues to tick closer to five minutes now. Huge third down opportunity now for the Dukes. You've given up field. So you've lost whatever advantage that would be to try to get your offense the ball back. Now you just have to try to keep the Bison out of the end zone, force a field goal right here, and keep this a one possession game. And traffic incomplete. Clock will stop at 442 and it's fourth down. Deflected off of Connor Wentz. The ball came out at hair late. Probably could have stuck it in there earlier. You see Went settling down right now. And it gave that secondary of the Dukes, who are ball hawks all across the field, a chance to converge on the ball. So 38-yard attempt from Cam Peterson. He has hit from 32 today from the near hash. Good clean snap, and the kick is blocked. Peterson falls on it, but the Dukes come up with a stop. They've got the football with 4.37 to play. It was right in the middle. Well, you're trying to get it the distance. Those kicks have a lower trajectory. And James Madison able to come up with a huge stop to force a field goal and then a block to keep North Dakota State off the field, off the scoreboard, and it's a four-point ball game. The Dukes needed a stop, and they got it. They block a field goal, trail by four, but this is how it happens. After a big third down stop, and that's just a low kick, and it was yanked to the left anyway. It ended up being Simeon Robinson, who's had a whale of a game. 4.37 to go. Ball sits at the 27. A little delay handoff to Marshall, and he can't get out of the grasp. Boy, this has been a, just a heck of a game for Nate Tange, Caleb Butler. Those guys up front have been really solid for the Bison today. They've been the difference. There hasn't been much running room, and with the passing downs, they've made Brian Shore very uncomfortable. The Bison have brought pressure, but they've won up front. Four-man rush. Shore trying to find some space. He'll just take off and run. First down and is walloped at the 45. 17-yard pickup. Butler comes back to make the play. Clock at 
402 and stops for just a second. Opportunistic, though. Once again, they win with four due to the Bison along their defensive front. Sure, wisely pulls the ball down with nowhere to go in the passing game and converts the first down. Now some pressure comes. Dukes pick it up. Looking on that far side for Stapleton. Second down and 10 coming up. Stapleton's been the guy today in terms of catching the football. He has seven catches. Nobody else with more than two. We've seen him high point a couple of balls. We haven't seen that signature back shoulder feint. I had a chance to throw one at the end of the second quarter. Ended up going with the timeout and kicking a field goal. Four-man rush again causing problems. Shore dropped after a pickup of a yard. They bluffed blitz with Jabril Cox. He bluffed into the box like he was going to blitz and then dropped back into coverage. And then the fourth rusher was able to get there once again. The Dukes are leaving Marshall in there as a protector to help augment some of the protection. See if the Bison bring pressure here on third down. Pressure comes from the edge. Shore near side, under throws it. Probably had to get rid of it a fraction of a second too early because Stanley Jones was bearing down on him. He was trying to throw right into the teeth of the pressure. Jabril Cox blitzing from the slot the 10th time. The Bison were able to make Brian Shore unload the football earlier than he wanted to. That ball was wide. He had to release it before he wanted to, before that outcut could come out of its break. And once again, a punt. With three timeouts left, the Dukes will punt it away. Try to pin the Bison back deep. And they'll run the fake. Oh, Kelly, all the way down to the 30-yard line. No flags on the play. A 25-yard scamper. O'Kelly's family came all the way from Australia to see him kick. And they got a chance to see him run, and there's not a bigger one in the entire season for James Madison. What a gutty call. Nice blocking up front. Just gets escorted. What a fantastic peel back by Liam Fornado. Great job executing the fake punt. That's the third time they've run the fake punt, and they've all been successful. Now a little quarterback draw from Shore. He's to the 20. The clock's at 224, and it'll be a first down, so it'll stop for just a moment. The quick change. You think you're off the field. You're forced to punt. They're able to pick up the yardage. This is exactly what North Dakota State capitalized on on their opening possession. The defense exhales. You think you finally got that stop. Maybe you can ice the game instead in a four-point ball game. Your opponent's in your red zone. Marshall, nowhere to go. There's just not a lot of room for him to run today. No gain on that play. I just can't. Harry O'Kelly played Australian rules football growing up. He's from Australia, the 21-year-old freshman making the play of the game to this point for James Madison. But can they convert? So far in this game, the Dukes have been one of five scoring touchdowns with their red zone opportunities. Pressure comes again. They'll swing it out to Marshall, cuts it back, and he is swarmed by white jerseys, led by Chris Board, a loss of a yard. A couple of touches back to back for Marcus Marshall. Timeout, James Madison, first charge. And James Madison timeout takes that timeout. What a game, 119 to go. The Dukes are driving. A record crowd on hand at Toyota Stadium for this FCS national title game, and they are getting their money's worth. North Dakota State won five of the last six. The team that broke that streak wants to take the, home, the trophy home one more time. Can they do it? They trail by four, third and 11 coming up. Shore. 
under pressure, still on his feet, gets rid of it, incomplete. Tuska chasing him down. Shore avoids the sack. 1-10 to play, and it's fourth and 11. Had to get rid of it. You can't take a sack right there and back it up, especially when you've got an unsure kicker. That time, Stapleton got jammed right at the line of scrimmage by Marquise Bridges. He rolled up in tight press man coverage, and there was no release for number 10 and nowhere to go with the football. Fourth and 11. Movement up front. Now Bridges was coming on pressure. Now the question is, did he draw Stinney off? False start. False start. Number 70. Offense. Oh, Stinney saying Five that yard penalty. Bridges was barreling Still down. down. The left tackle is going to say that Marquise Bridges, see, he's looking outside. If you got slide protection working all the way out, you've got your eyes on that edge defender. And Bridges was coming like crazy. He was definitely going to be blitzing from his corner spot. And instead, it's a false start. North Dakota State's going to take a timeout. North Dakota State, first charge, 30 seconds away. Fourth and 16. You got to get it inside the nine yard line for a first down. Now, we've seen. North Dakota State convert a couple of long third downs. One of them was third and 17. They hit it for a 50-yard touchdown, but a fourth down and 16, a little dicey. Yeah, if you're North Dakota State, you've got a 16-yard field. And right now, you've got 15 yards to be wrong. That's what the side of it you want to have, no question. But on the snap where they had a chance, or thought that they did, Watch the work. Look at Marquise Bridges. This isn't a run. Stapleton's not looking to try to block right there. He gets jammed. A great job by Bridges. Stapleton doesn't get a release, and there was nowhere to go with the ball. And he's at the top again, the same matchup. Stapleton versus Bridges, and he's rolled up in coverage again. Shore heaves it toward the end zone. It's a jump ball batted around and incomplete. And North Dakota State has done it. That time Stapleton was able to get a release and got downfield, but Shore once again was moved off his mark in the pocket. That has been a hallmark of this entire game. Brian Shore having to buy time, feels that pressure, has to step up in the pocket and slide to the right. That's away from Riley Stapleton, takes a shot from Jabril Cox. And you got Terrence Alls right there on the goal line underneath it, got his fingertips on it. Second time in this game where all's got his hands on it. Couldn't come up with the catch. Anderson getting mauled as the Dukes try to rip that football out of his arms. Timeout. James Madison. 54 seconds to go tonight. Time after Duke out. NC James State Madison. on ESPN, Second tune into Sports half. Center. We'll break down Trey Young's tonight. performance against number six West Virginia. Well, that dude can absolutely ball the freshman point guard at Oklahoma. Plus, we'll tell you if the Greek freak made it 28 straight games with 20 or more points against the Wizards and a conversation with Nick Saban. All this and more, Sports Center on ESPN and the ESPN app. Don't forget, you can stay tuned for our trophy presentation coming up on ESPN 3 right after the game. Chris Kleiman and company trying to Hold on to the football here with 54 seconds left. The Dukes one timeout remaining. Easton Stick will just keep it himself. So Stick today, 13 to 22, 130 yards, a TD and no picks. Timeout, James Madison, third and final charge timeout. 30 seconds in late. Really none bigger 
than his scramble on a third and ten. Another long yardage situation. He didn't have anywhere to go. Hadn't been a lot of running room in this entire game. Kind of broke loose a little bit for the Bison on the ground here in the fourth quarter. But not indicative of what we're used to seeing out of their offense. I mean, you look at second half possessions, punt, 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 block field goal. And now they're trying to run out the clock. James Madison, though, 26 straight victories. Mike Houston has done one of the most remarkable jobs in college football. When you think about his accomplishments, 14-0 this year, national championship a year ago, went to the Fargo Dome, took down the Bison last year. The number one seed. That hand. That'll go uh, to about the 38-yard line. He's a yard, about a yard shy. And it looks like there's going to be about, about four seconds between the game clock and the play clock. Well, he could just run around and take a safety. And the thing is, what will haunt James Madison, I think, is that decision to kick a field goal at the end of the first half. Because here at the end of the game, well, you, you changed everything. Instead of with your points, you came away with three. You could have come away with seven. One of six in the red zone in this game. Well, Timeout taken by North Dakota State with four there seconds. There is no foul for a delay of game. Timeout was called. North Dakota State, second charge of the half, 30 seconds in late. So Easton Stick, the North Dakota State quarterback, the junior, out of Omaha, Nebraska, has been named the most outstanding player today for his efforts. And he kept drives alive, not only with his arm, with his feet. And this entire North Dakota State team has been on one mission since it ended last year in Fargo. And that is they wanted a shot in a championship against these guys. You know, you, you mentioned Nate Tangway earlier. You know, Nick DeLuca, something that Quint hit on as well. Guys that didn't take the field. Trey Dempsey in that contest during the semifinals. A year ago in the Fargo Dome, a place where the Bison dominate. They weren't out there. They were out there for this game. And Tangway making one of the bigger plays of this game. Timeout. North Dakota State. Third and final charge timeout. 30 seconds in length. Kleiman's over there making sure everybody's on the same page here. Four seconds to play in this game. You secure this football, no doubt about it. You don't want any calamity. Nothing crazy about Easton Stick from a number standpoint, but was clutch. 13 to 22. The guy doesn't spend a lot of time airing it out more than 20 times a game. You know, really offensively in general, the Bison were underwhelming. Credit that to the Duke's defense. If we're not for some of those quick changes. You know, maybe a little relaxation when you thought you forced a punt on the opening possession, and that's the difference in this game from a scoring opportunity standpoint. Both defenses. And Easton Stick will run out the clock, and it hits zeros. And the Bison have done it. They have reclaimed their place and topped the out with the national championship. 17 to 13 over James Madison. Let's go down to Quint. Coach, congratulations. What made the difference? Our character and our perseverance. We got a bunch of warriors and a bunch of winners in that locker room. And they wanted to leave a legacy today. And they left a legacy for the 2017 Bison. What a great group of guys. So proud of them. How would you best describe your red zone defense? It's phenomenal. Field goals don't beat you. Field goals don't beat you. And that's what we try to do. So proud of the guys. They busted their tail. What's this mean? And we won a six national championship in seven years. Nobody's done it before. Crazy scene down here, Dave. <laughs> they wanted it. They got it. 
What a year for North Dakota State. What a year for James Madison. The game lived up to the billing. First time the top two seeds have met since 2011, but the Bison come away with a win. And the defense, I think, if you could give a game ball, you give it to those guys. They were clutch. They were under man versus a team that could threaten them in the passing game. They tried. They stood up to the challenge. Great job all around, and this is the picture of complimentary football and dominance, a dynasty for North Dakota State. Six national titles in the last seven years for the North Dakota State Bison. They win it 17 to 13. It's time for us to get it out of here and get you some college basketball. Congratulations to North Dakota State and James Madison. Heck of a game today. It's Notre Dame and Syracuse.